Well, greetings, pinball fans, and welcome to Alpha Bravo Pinball. Tonight on the channel, how to level your game and set the playfield inclination. Whether you've just bought your first machine or you're an experienced collector, I'm going to show you my five favorite techniques for leveling your games, including a method you may not have seen before of my own invention. What the heck is this? Watch on and find out. So today what we're going to be doing is leveling the game side to side and setting the inclination. Leveling side to side I think is, is pretty straightforward. You don't want the ball rolling left or right, um, so you just need to get it, get it level side to side. But in terms of inclination, you may be wondering what inclination should you set? Well, check the manual in your game. A lot of modern games recommend 6.5 degrees. 6.5 is a pretty good starting point, but you may find that the gameplay is not as fast paced as you would like. I definitely recommend trying some steeper settings, say 7 degrees, you can even go higher than that. Um, the, the more steep you make your game, the faster it will play, the more fun, but also much more difficult. The difficulty scales pretty well with uh, steepness of the game. So start with 6.5 and, and go from there. Alright, getting right into it. In fifth position, the hardware store bubble level. You may have one of these at home already. Um, is very commonly, very easily obtainable at the hardware store, a standard bubble level. It works great, of course, for leveling the machine left to right, but unfortunately, when it comes to setting the pitch of the game, this tool doesn't really help you. Um, instead, you may need to rely on the bubble level for setting the pitch built into the machine. However, those are really not my favorite method for setting the pitch of a game. These bubble levels vary greatly from machine to machine, manufacturer to manufacturer. Um, you, you definitely want to look at the instruction manual for your particular game to be able to decode the, the little lines on them because they are different from generation to generation. Um, but generally just not my favorite method. It is, uh, it is, if you have a bubble level already though, it's totally a valid way of setting the pitch uh, and leveling your game. In search of a solution for this, of course, I then upgraded to a digital level, like so. This features an LCD readout and uh, can actually tell you the inclination in 0.1 degree increments. Uh, I first started with this uh, Husky brand model, um, found the accuracy to be only so-so, uh, but I mean, the great thing is you can level side to side and it tells you the, the pitch angle. Um, I unfortunately lost mine to alkaline battery leakage, which is really awful. It seems like alkaline batteries just leak like crazy, uh, it ruined it. Um, but then I used that as an excuse to upgrade to this better Klein model, um, which is more accurate I found than the, uh, the Husky brand one, which is great. It says claims 0.1 degree uh, accuracy at, at level. Um, the tricky thing about using it, however, is that it is so small um, that you, you need to get it perfect, perfectly perpendicular to the play field to um, left and right uh, to get a valid measurement. Uh, if it's rotated at all, you're, it's going to change the, the value. Um, and it's so small that it's a lot more difficult versus the, the, the longer bubble level to, to, to align correctly with your play field. Otherwise, I do like that approach. It works pretty well. In third place, Absolutely nothing. No tools, no nothing. This is definitely maybe something that's more for the advanced collector, not so much the first time home buyer. You actually don't need any tools whatsoever to set the pitch and level your game. You do so simply by playing it. Um, generally, on most games, uh, to set an acceptable playfield inclination, uh, I generally like having the rear leg levelers all the way out and the front ones almost all the way in. That will give you a steep enough setting to, to make the game fun and then you just adjust from there. If it's too steep, uh, it's too playing too fast, too hard, well, um, put the front levelers out a little bit more to, to shallow the angle. 
Uh, similarly, left to right, you can get pretty close right off the bat, just if you know your floor, if you're on a level surface, then set them equally. Uh, here in the garage, the garage pitches away towards the garage door, of course, for to evacuate water. So I know that the, the legs that are closer to the garage door need to be out just a few turns compared to the other ones. That'll get you pretty close to start. And then uh, if you're an advanced player, you'll know when the game's not level. That is an approach that I use all the time. Don't have any tools, no problem. Uh, it's definitely more difficult uh, if you're a beginner, however, um, you won't get the feel. It's gonna just take you, you can still do it, it's just gonna take you way longer um, because the, the, the more advanced players uh, with more experience can recognize when a game is not level that much more quickly. In second position, my second favorite method is the Pin Guy app. This is a wonderful tool. One of the main advantages of the Pin Guy app, which is free, by the way, at least at the time of the recording of this video, um, the Pin Guy app talks to you. That and so kind of <laughs> when you're underneath the game, actually adjusting that the levelers, uh, you can just Perfectly listen aligned. for the voice of the Pin Guy app and adjust accordingly. It saves you from having to, you know, go back down to the floor and back up to the game down to the floor. Perfectly wonderful, aligned. wonderful tool. Uh, I like it a lot. Left. All right, and now my number one favorite method for setting the pitch and leveling my games. This and this. Com the combination of both of these two things. So yeah, what the heck is this thing? So what this is exactly is a 3D printed set of steps but the steps are not equal. Each step is at a slightly different angle. And of course, those are, those are play field inclination angles. Uh, what this allows you to do is to put this down on your play field and then use a standard bubble level uh, to get an accurate reading. And uh, the beauty of the bubble level and the reason I like it so much is it never goes out of calibration. This, the bubble level, of course, uses just gravity it's uh, and it's instant you get an instant reading um, I, I feel like it's the the method I, I it's my go-to because it's fast and it's always correct and I never have to worry about it so that's why I designed and um, made 3d printed this contraption here uh, it, it works pretty good in practice um, it you never have to unlike the uh, bubble level that's built into the machine you never have to figure out uh, how to read it because it's uh, printed on it clear as day um, and very simple to use. If you'd like to 3D print your own of these, head on over to abpinball.com and I will post a 3D model for free so you can download it. And if you have a 3D printer or you know someone that does, go ahead and print your own. Uh, and these little acrylic bubble levels are easily buyable for cheaply online. So the combination of both of those two things that's my number one method, folks. All right, and now I have a few other miscellaneous tips for you when you're actually leveling your game. Regardless of which method you choose, of course, you need to go under the machine and turn the leg levelers on the legs to actually adjust the game. This is backbreaking. We've all pinball collectors have done the uh, the crouched over stance on all fours with the using your back to lift the game because of course you have to lift the game to be able to turn the leg levelers. You can't turn them unless the game is off the ground. It's really really not fun. Some people like to use a stool or something else to hold the game up uh, while uh, you, while you're turning the leg levelers. One tip that I really, really like is if you have pinball skates, because pinball skates are an amazing tool for uh, moving uh, games. They're, they're primarily designed, of course, for making it easy to move games around because it puts the game on wheels. But a secondary benefit is they're just amazing for leveling machines as well because you've got a nice big arm that helps you lift the game. Uh, and then uh, the skates keep the leg levelers off the ground, making it then trivial to adjust. And so a lot of the times, if, especially if it's a you know, multi-part operation, you end up lifting, putting down, lifting, putting down, um, and the, the skates just make that really, really easy. Another tip uh, that's pretty important is you want to try to end up with equal weight on all four legs. If um, you've otherwise, you know, you may end up in a situation if there's one, one leg that has less weight on it, the cabinet will flex a little bit um, and the game won't be as stable. 
Um, but yeah, you just don't want any twist in the cabinet whatsoever to make sure that uh, it's, it's the, the play field inside the cabinet is sitting right and uh, it's got the same kind of level side to side all the way front to back. So when I'm trying to test to see if there's equal weight on all four wheels, what I like to do is just give the front two legs a little shove. Um, you will find that, you know, if, there, if the, there's not equal weight on all four, one of the two in the front um, will, will, have, will be a lot more easy to move than the other. That's a sign that you need to adjust uh, one of the front two legs to, to get, it, uh, get all four on an equal plane. Um, you can take multiple measurements on your playfield, by the way, uh, and you, you may notice that you don't get the same reading across the playfield. Sometimes that's because if you're on inserts, the inserts can be slightly raised. So I like to level, uh, put, put whatever implement you're using to, to measure, put it on, on wood, not on the inserts, because the inserts can definitely cause a fluctuation in measurement. But even when uh, you're measuring on wood, you may find that the reading is not consistent across the playfield, either front to back or left to right. Uh, that can mean uh, that your game is, the game surface itself is not completely flat. Pinball playfields are made out of wood, of course, plywood, and it's not uncommon. Uh, and, and in fact, it, you know, there's no such thing as a perfectly 100.0% flat piece of, piece of plywood, uh, it, it's, not a, it's not a question of if it has a bow or a warp, it's a question of how much, really. And ideally, your game you know, has very, very little bowing to it, and to the point where you can barely measure it and certainly not notice it during play. But that doesn't mean it's not there. Um, and it certainly can happen for games to, to have um, you know, warping in the wood to the point where the, the game, it's, it's noticeable during g gameplay or even to the point where the game is unplayable. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind when you're, uh, when you're measuring your play field. Um, and actually with the techniques that you've learned today that will help you not just adjust the inclination and level for proper gameplay, but it will also help you check if your play field is warped. Just by doing different measurements at different p parts of the play field, uh, you should be able to tell pretty easily if the game is warped or not. Well folks, that's what I had for you today. Please let me know in the comments, what is your favorite techniques for leveling and setting the pitch on your games? And please stay tuned for next time here on Alpha Bravo Pinball. Between last video and this one, I've got a ton of parts in the mail to be able to do our refurbishment of Twilight Zone. So I'll most likely be doing videos on that very soon. Thanks everyone for watching. Stay safe and play some pinball.